cooler thing mm. tend to be around an app. It's yeah. very hard to get a consumer to download an app. Yep. For, like, like I work on a lot of CPG clients. Mm. No one's downloading an app for yeah. 99% of the things they work on. Yeah. So I guess how do you get around some of these more exciting ideas around leverage yeah. geolocation information without yeah. It's so it's so funny. Like it's so we we got we got to the point where you could get brands really excited about an app, but we can't really get brands really excited yet about APIs into Siri or APIs into Facebook Messenger. But that's really the next frontier. If you have kind of a fractional ownership of the customer, then really your best bet is to leverage the geographic capabilities of, or just the overall interaction capabilities of those different messenger platforms and, and intelligent agents. And there's an example I love to use around um, Everlane, for example, where Everlane, just rather than trying to, well, they have their own app as well, but like they've enabled so much functionality through Facebook Messenger around everything from ordering to like the actual tra like monetary transaction to package tracking to uh, seeing variations on a product. Um, but it's a whole other skill set. I think the thing that's challenging for brands, they just got to the point where they were you know, understanding they have to build out CRM systems and loyalty programs, and now we're kind of layering on in addition to building out their apps, now you have to have all these APIs into you know, anything from Google Now to Siri to Amazon to, you know, to Alexa uh, to Facebook Messenger, and it's disorienting for them. But this is very much like the new frontier for marketers is how do you data enable these experiences that you may not own, but you're kind of borrowing. Um, yeah, it's a real challenge, for, especially for, for CPG. I mean, they're, they're trying to create content and, 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 and then owning that transactional data they've never had before. Uh, question there? I just got here, so uh, let me know if you want to talk after this. Uh, <laughs> sure. Question that you already so you talked about APIs. Hmm. Um, You know, there are, what I think are interesting, um, in a different presentation, I've got like a whole, there's, you know, there are obviously a huge ecosystem of new machine learning and AI players and predictive analytics players. Um, th there are a couple, um, API.ai, which was recently purchased by Google, is a, a great example of kind of a, um, it, it's a uh, kind of a meta API engine that basically allows you to quickly port your integrations with one platform into another. And it's funny, you can just see the, it's a direct real response to the, the diversity of different platforms and connections that you cr have companies that are de dedicated to doing nothing but just connecting one API to another. Um, segment IO is kind of interesting for, um, as a kind of front end data capture and integration, passing data and browser experiences from one platform to another. Um, and then, of course, I mean, the, then the platforms themselves, I mean, the, the developer resources for anything from, you know, Watson to Facebook Messenger to Alexa, there are these new developer ecosystems, and, and you can get a lot of support as a developer. But, but, I, but I find really interesting is, is that relatively new trend of, like, the, the, the meta API layer. Um, is there a question over here? Yeah. It's more of a higher level question. Obviously, the scope of what you guys do is incredibly mm. vast. How would you onboard a client, and how do you decide yeah. what is the best fit for said client? You know, it's funny, a lot of it, when I showed the, the, the journey maps, like a lot of our onboarding, even during like a, a new business process, actually looks a lot like this. It's, it's saying, you know, here's the existing journey, here's the future state journey, and then what's, what's the delta? What, what data assets do you already have? What have you already invested in? And a lot of times we find that clients come to us and they, they think they're, they don't really have much in the way of assets. What they've actually done is they've bought a lot of software, maybe a lot of hardware, but they haven't invested in the people. They haven't gotten the benefit of, the, of all this infrastructure investment because they, didn't, they weren't able to hire the skill sets they needed to internally or they found that their internal teams were just either, um, either resistant or kind of incentivized to do something different. Um, so a lot of our role just ends up being kind of like, let's diagnose that, that current state and then see just how big that delta is. And, you know, like the, the, this engagement size is this, I mean, I've tended to show you some of the larger brands, but like there's stuff which starts out pretty small or it's more about saying like what we'll do like a discovery and transformation engagement and kind of teach you how to fish. And, and that, that's a, a key part of it as well, just kind of educating executives uh, and those companies about what they could and should be doing. Um, varies a lot. Um, yeah. 
Um, so let me skip ahead as far uh, past the example. Well, any other questions on the examples or use cases? Yeah. Oh, sure. So in the ad tech and martech world, um, you can you can get third-party data on location. You can get both profile data, which is basically being sold. You can also just um, use um, APIs and third-party services to, to pull location data from the network. Um, and there's some that use, uh, you use ISP data and network data for that. Um, you can get, so that we don't have to ask permission to access the location on the device. Um, but in many of those cases, the location is locked either to a, a profile, like a Facebook login or somebody else's, like an email address, or it's logged to an IP address, which is um, not an especially accurate way of doing things. Um, but if, you, um, if any of you are using programmatic media today, you'll see that any, almost any DSP will, uh, basically every DSP will allow you to, to select one or more geographies, usually down to zip code level. And so if you're just trying to get down to zip, there are tons of different providers that'll, that'll sell that data. Um, yeah, what's it's just tricky about it is knowing like because of of because you don't know where they got that data from from it's like knowing will it be provide that relevant experience. So like in the case of the um, of this example, you know if you're showing a person ads either on a phone on a desktop, um, usually this is just locked to either an IP address or a profile. So it doesn't really tell you that's where the person is right now. It just tells you that it's it's tied to um, uh, to the network that person's coming from, or to a profile they set up before. Um, so we went through these. So hopefully some of this is is kind of useful and stimulating thought and, and tool sets. Any uh, any kind of other kind of questions or or perspectives and reactions ideas? Otherwise, it's pretty much lunchtime. Yeah. Um, so we're a funny company. We, 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 we simultaneously compete with um, companies like Frog Design and IDEO that live very, very far upstream in the ecosystem that are basically like pure product design consultancies all the way down to competing with ad agencies. And that's a very like, um, it's a very wide, but the idea is to be able to kind of really bring people through that whole journey. Um, and, and for a lot of companies that are, have a very diverse product base, they, they can only focus on so many things at a time. And so the idea is they can kind of, we're able to help them bring new products to life. The, the downside of that is that, uh, and as you're saying the risks to that, um, is that we are, we're very talent hungry. <laughs> and it, it's, it, these are a lot of very specialized skills. And so especially around AI experiences and, and, um, and APIs, it can be very hard for us to keep pace with the talent needs. So we end up doing, um, we run this thing called huge schools where we literally take people and we, we take recent college grads or graduate students and, and we, it's basically like, a, um, like an old school, um, not internship, but it's like a uh, apprenticeship program. And we actually have to apprentice and train employees just to be able to kind of keep up with the demand for the skills. Um, this is probably the biggest challenge, I would say, more for our, our clients. If you're, if you're Google, there are a lot of people that want to work for Google. You have a kind of a built-in magnet for attracting talent. But for a lot of our clients who are, um, you know, those who don't have like the, um, the sexy destination brand thing going for them, it can be really, really hard attracting what's a very finite talent pool. And that, that, that's where most often we're, we're kind of filling in those gaps. So you help your clients attract talent as well? Well, more that we're, we're, we're like a narrow, like if there's a narrow window where they need a highly specialized skill set, they may have tried to attract that skill set in house and just haven't been able to. Um, and, and especially around the, the AI and API development space, that's, that's a, a common, becoming a more common use case. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.